the, the school should have secured the letters, yeah. pass letters, mm. to enable the students to pass through, and even by the time they will be in Nairobi, they will be able to reach their homes yes. actually safely, having also the, the prior preparation. Mm. Because prior preparation actually is actually what made everything actually fail. Yeah. Because you find all a student who has been who was traveling from Eldore to Nairobi. By mm. reaching Nairobi, it was already I mean uh, seven thirty, almost mm. eight. Mm. Now you they were stranded. They had to sleep along the streets, which is actually I mean. It, I mean, the country knew that the, 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 the schools will close down. The country mm. knew that there were those who were sitting for the exams. Mm. And of course, let me tell you, Victor, mm. when the lockdown was made, yes. of course the president was very clear that there are students who are now I mean, sitting for their exams mm. and that they also had their own leeway to do their exams very peacefully. As, as soon as they finish, they'll, they'll, they'll go back to their own homes. So it was not, I mean, a surprising thing that the children were to go back to their yeah. homes. It was something that was pre-planned. Yes. Why what we are witnessing, this, I mean, is, is, why we are seeing what we are seeing, I really don't understand. Mm. So it is something that we must have that rearrangement before the whole incident so that we don't let our people suffer unnecessarily. Yeah. Yes. Because the students are very innocent. They don't know anything about their curfews. They don't Absolutely. know anything about most. Um, uh, so uh, there must be a prior arrangement in everything that we are doing. Mm. You also saw, uh, man, Victor, when yeah. the, the, the beginning of this uh, lockdown, mm. many people were caught off guard. Those who are in Eldoret, they, they remained there. Those who are in Nakuru, they could not make it to the other side of Something the world. Something that trees are not. And um, it shows how maybe, I don't know, yeah. are we taking these, I mean, um, these uh, strict rules with the full advice of the law, or we are, I mean, why are we on a hurry? That mm. we don't have to think that there are those others who, are, who could be outside the premises that we are talking about. Mm. So I think this is something that um, the, the planners must yes. plan well, and they should advise the Absolutely. president as to when anything is to be done, because mm. if it was yeah. the advice of the, the professionals, the Ministry of Health and all this and that, they should have been also able to consider how the time frame under which all those who are outside, those mm. who are inside, those who would wish to go out of Nairobi, and these other lockdown uh, counties, they would be given time to uh, mean to make their mm. own way to their own homes or yeah. respective areas where they would wish to be yes. during the lockdown. Yeah. So okay. I think this is something that uh, in future it has to be uh, looked into All right. uh, so that we don't let our people suffer necessarily. Absolutely. Um, we are not alone in studio. Uh, we have got two gentlemen. And by the way, there is um, don't uh, there is nothing like. Uh, we are not sensitive to gender parity, all right? Um, we'll balance it. <laughs> we promise we'll balance it. With me is uh, uh, Joseph Semecha, who is a governance expert as well as a uh, um, political analyst, as well as Dr. David Masanga, all the way from the United Kingdom. Gentlemen, if you can hear me, Dr. Masanga, let me start with you. Far away from home, good morning. Good morning, uh, Kenya. Good morning, Africa. <laughs> Thank you very much in the studio. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, uh, Rokic. In the op is it? So I remember much. his name vividly in the yes, studio. <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, thank you very much, my friend, the communication director. Thank you. Uh, uh, the, the guy we have struggled so much to reach where we are. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Masanga, we'll get back to you. I hope uh, UK is doing pretty well. You will tell us more about let, that. Let me, let, uh, first of all, before you, you go, United Kingdom only released, removed this lockdown on 12th of yes. this month. Let me tell you, it was even difficult to enter a pub to mm -hmm. have a drink. So all these excuses in Africa, Germany, the rule of law is clear. Eight o'clock, start going home at five. That's my mm. position. Mm. Okay. We will yes. ask you more about that, Dr. Masanga. And uh, Joseph Simeha, good morning. Once again, it's good to see you. Good morning. Uh, nice to see you too. Uh, I'm coming to you from Bunyore and Vihiga. It is certainly much better here than in the United Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Conti all right. I hope everything is fantastic down there in the village, and uh, we are going to get more into details. We've just been talking about the issues, um, uh, lockdown, and there is an uproar from a number of Kenyans saying that uh, this is just affecting them. What do you say about this, uh, Simeha? Um, I hear you. I actually have uh, a slightly different opinion. While as a matter of principle, I agree with what Dr. Masanga is saying, 
yes. people must respect when uh, laws, rules, procedures are put in place. Mm. But a government has a responsibility, one, to prepare its people, to give it information in advance and prepare mm -hmm. its people. A government also has a responsibility to facilitate, to aid the um, obeying of those rules and uh, regulations. And uh, one of the, the, the person you were talking to earlier put it very well. A lot of people do not have means of trans personal means of transport. They are compelled to stay at work until 5 p.m. that Dr. Matsanga is talking about. So unless the government works in advance with employers, what can these people do? And if they don't go to work and stay until 5, they don't earn. So really, I put responsibility on government as having failed its own people. You don't just throw information out there and yeah. hope that somehow people will comply. Okay, L let me just bring in Dr. Masanga in this and ask him, Dr. Masanga, you said that uh, UK is also on a lockdown. What is quite different uh, with us here in Kenya and what are some of the lessons we can borrow? And how are they handling it there in the UK? First of all, as you know, the pandemic has hit hard in Europe. The only biggest advantage that Europe has is that Europe has a social contract. Mm. We in Africa don't have a social contract. We don't have it. In China, there is a social contract. Yeah. That's why they finished, they finished the entire uh, pandemic. Wuhan, which is 80 million people, mm -hmm. <laughs> there is no more COVID at all. That's where the thing started. The difference with Africa is we didn't, we have, as I agree with my friend for the first time in the, our <laughs> lives when we have uh, met on TV, that we have, we have not prepared our people well enough. We should prepare our people. And two, although, yes. let's tell the truth. Our characters are very bad. We have bad characters, we Africans. We have, we are, we are reactive. We are not proactive. Mm. If you ask an African that there will be a case in the Hague, he will go to get the visa on Friday when he's flying on Monday. And the inconvenience, the whole system. Why are we not proactive? On 18th of February, 2020, uh, 2020, yes. I was in the Hague on the Somalia case with Kenya. I wrote a document. I wrote, I warned Africa. I wrote to 54 heads of state that this thing is coming. On the seven heads of state took my letter and replied and said, thank you very much. Mm. And okay. those that took my advice includes my own country. Yes. Seven put regulations. I want to ask people in Kenya. Okay. Why is why is the rate of infection across the border? All right. Um, uh, but Banamasanga, what, we'll get wait, back wait. to you. Banamasanga, I'm no, coming back to you shortly. I'm coming back to you shortly, and we are going to discuss more in details. Let me just um, bring in Rotiche in studio. Rotich, you've heard what Dr. Masanga is saying. What is your take on that? I think, uh, Victor, we are talking about the two different worlds. Yes. Kenya is quite different in the sense that the standard of living of our people mm. is quite low. Majority of our people are living okay. on hand to mouth. Mm. They are living okay. on what they are getting on daily basis. Yes. So they must go out if they have to eat. So this is a whole world of difference. We don't stock our food. We don't stock even. So what we, inve what we are investing so mm. much in is our time we are also investing i mean the the the, the, the our day to day i uh, mean look out for food mm. so in this case we cannot equate ourselves with these other developed countries where they can stock their food for several months so in this case kenya is a different place and it must be treated i uh, mean uh, differently yes and in this case um when you are preparing for a lockdown the country should be preparing on how to mitigate yeah the problems that these people are facing, especially in the areas of food. Mm. And in the areas, like, like now, when we talk about medical facilities, there should be a prior, I mean, arrangement or plan as to those people who have been depending, like, no, like those people who are now applying from outside yeah. the five counties which are under lockdown. Yes. 
They are getting their medical services in Nairobi, uh, Nairobi Hospital, Kenyatta Hospitals, mm. I mean, Karen Hospitals. All these hospitals are centered in Nairobi. Mm. Has it been prepared before the lockdown that yeah. these people have their freeway yes. to their uh, health facilities? Mm. So these are some of the things that we must consider. Absolutely. And if we have to have these people locked down, are we able to provide food for them? Yeah. If the government is not able to provide food for them, then they must be given an ample time to look for their well-being. I mean, what they are actually eating on a daily basis. Yeah. So that is the difference. That is the whole world of difference between us and other countries outside. I mean, the, 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 the European countries. Okay. They can have a permanent lockdown for okay. several months. All right. <laughs> so let, let's, get, uh, let's get into the gist of the story today. And um, over the weekend, and a lot of meetings have been happening. And let me bring in Simeha from uh, Vihiga in Bunyore. Um, Simeha, the race to have Ruto running mate is actually heating up. We have got two camps already, one supporting Madhira MP Rigade Gashagwa and another one supporting uh, former CS Mongi Q Injuri. What do you make of this? Are we going to have a crack in the Ruto camp anytime soon? Um, I don't know whether we'll have a crack or not, but I, um, as a matter of principle, I think now the, the political dynamics are be taking a better turn. Why do I say better turn? Previously, it has been the top leaders, let me use that word, top leaders, who have meetings, have auto ops, photo, photo ops, um, sort of dictate the pace of what is happening. Mm. It is very nice to see the power shift to a lower level where there are people who are coalescing and talking and discussing and organizing and then making demands on the leadership, on the top leadership. That really is very good for development of democracy. Oftentimes in, 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 in our country, it is the most powerful, the top leaders who make decisions and then dictate what happens even at the lowest levels in the, in the wards and constituencies. It's, it's a fantastic th thing to see leaders from regions, leaders from counties, organize, mobilize their people, coalesce you know, around each other and issues and form themselves into a power base that they can use to, to bargain for their interests with top leaders. So I just want to say that. I don't know whether there'll be a rift or not, but I actually think that is good for Ruto's camp, that that ought to happen in other camps where it is not everybody looking up to the leader up there. The leader also has to listen and look where the people are and recognize that that is where the true power ought to lay, to lie, sorry. Okay. Um, let me just bring in uh, Dr. Masanga here. Dr. Masanga, there seem to be a, a crack. What is your take on that? Because uh, as it is right now, the race to have Ruto running mate is uh, already heating up. Dr. Masanga. First of all, thank you very much. I don't know which party Ruto is going to run on. Because his leg, one leg is in Jubilee. He hasn't declared whether he has left Jubilee. I'm a friend of the Jubilee party. I don't hide. I'm not a voter in Kenya, but I'm a friend. Each party has friends. I'm one of those. And I don't know whether Ruto will run in, on Jubilee ticket or which... He has not officially told us. So which crack, crack where? To crack which, with what? Because we don't know. Let's be very honest. Rotich, uh, Dr. Rotich, is, is it Kajit or, or in the studio will tell you when you are planning your finances, you focus, you put your budget. I know he's an expert in budgeting and so on. You know what you are going to do, and I tell the people, I'll spend 200 million in this and that and that. But as far as we are concerned, although Ruto has not told anybody where, which party he will use. He still wants to power in the ruling party, he still belittles the president. He's still staying in the same party. Let him make a decision. So when you tell me, uh, Kinjuri and uh, my friend from uh, not my my friend from Mavira in Nyeri, yes, both of these guys are and 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 starters. First of all, one cannot even speak English. The other one cannot even construct a sentence. So, <laughs> which Kenyan, you or all, will you accept that? That is one of them can. These are people making money out of Ruto. I have told you 
Dr. Ruto still has a lot of problems, a lot of roadblocks. There will be a lot of challenges before he can pick up that candidature. So let him concentrate on neater, greater three things. Mm -hmm. Some of us, like me, or all, I am a son of Africa. I have told you I will defend Africa, and I will defend any African who goes to the ICC. I will not allow any African ever, ever to be taken to the ICC. Even if you have hurt me like Ruto has hurt me, if anything happens to him, I will defend. Even if you hurt me like M7 has hurt me, if he's taken to the ICC, I will refuse. Yes. Because Africa must begin, must begin to have its own courts, mm. must begin to interrogate their own people. The gentleman in the studio talked about, don't compare Europe, and we have had independence for 59 years. Every year during the dry and season, the, the chairman of Red Cross Mm. is begging for money surely and yes. you are telling people on the national television that we cannot prepare after 57 years don't we know that the hunger will strike in Turkana yes. don't, don't, don't we have a meteorological department saying floods will come part of the problem we have we hate the truth mm -hmm. and uh, Sameka and uh, my doctor friend of, in the studio will agree with me if you come to Africa and start telling the truth, prepare your journey towards the maker very fast. So time has come for Africans, younger people like you yes. in the studio to stand up. <clears throat> for us, I am going. For me, I'm going. I am 65 years old. I've done my bit. I am going. God will take me at a, a, a time when he wants. But I want to leave a generation that reasons, that thinks about Africa, that does not do things wrongly. You are in two parties. Then you say you are creating, which one are you going to stand in? Leave Uhuru Kenyatta. If you are... Okay, to, uh, all right. Oro, let, let, me fin, let me finish it here. Okay. We, we are taking a break. Ruto, we are taking a break, Dr. Masanga. If, Dr. Masanga, let's, let's, Dr. This, let's take... Let, okay, one, one second, please. If, if Dr. Ruto does not want to be in the Jubilee Party. If he's a man enough, stand up and say, I have gone, I am with you, dear. Then mm -hmm. people will love him. But you are both in two legs, in one, two several parties. Who will love you? No way. <laughs> Dr. Basanga, all the way from the UK, let's take a break. You've taken us on a break. Thank you so much. We are taking just a break. And with me here, I have my... It's good morning, so I'm taking my tea. You can also sip your tea. We'll be right back in a moment. More yet to come. Take a break.